So we are going to have a talk now from Fernando Masanori Ashikada, Ashikaga. I hope I pronounced yes. that correctly. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, he is professor at the uh, FATEC San Jose de Campos. Where is that? Um, Brazil. In Brazil. So you're, yes. you're talking from Brazil now, yeah? Yes. <laughs> oh, that's nice. What's the weather like? It's probably very warm, right? Yes, very hot today. Uh -huh. Okay, excellent. And um, he loves teaching, which is which is great, of course. And he loves Python, of course. So he's going to talk about Python emergency remote teaching. So in the response to the COVID point, uh, nineteen pandemic, and yeah, I'm looking forward to your talk. So let's start. Um, first of all. I need to say thank you to all the volunteers that made uh, online version of EuroPython. Um, I appreciate very much the lot of efforts that made the interactions possible. Uh, my talk is about sharing some experiences at my university. As you know, uh, COVID-19 changed many things in the world. Last month, a UNICEF report says that at this moment, more than 1 billion students are still out of school worldwide. In Brazil, many universities are now without any type of classes is difficult to decide to go online because there are so many students without a computer or internet, internet connection. But um, it's important to keep education alive, to keep in touch with our students during the isolation. In my university, more than 75% of my students are low income. So education is a, a opportunity to change their lives. And isolation um, for four months now is very dangerous. An invitation to give it up of their studies. A lot of people teach programming with Python. Education is part of Python community. At PyCon UK, PyCon Japan, PyCon Australia, PyCon US, our, there, there is also a education track. I will share my experiences in this talk, in these emergency times. Work at home is very hard <laughs> because there are kids, cats, dogs, whatever, in the same place all the time, every day for now four months. I have two dogs and five cats and they are very, very social. Whenever they heard me talking with the students, they wanted it to participate. This is my cat, Guido. Um, is always curious about the, my equipments. Teachers are very communicative in their nature. In the face-to-face -face meetings, it's possible to catch in the air, some difficult uh, of one student. So improving interactions is a key process in remote teaching. A lot of my colleagues are became very frustrated in virtual classrooms. A survey in Brazil shows that 8% of teachers feel uncomfortable to teach online. But 
is nothing is better than nothing. It's okay to be human. For our students, see a teacher struggling with technical issues proves that education matters. Behind the screen, there are someone that thinks that education worth all these efforts. I have a static YouTube channel for flipped classrooms, and there are a lot of content at the internet. Um, there are synchronous interactions in the time of all the face-to-face -face classes. So I became a bridge be between the, all, all the knowledge and the learning process. Teachers send glimpses of what is really important at each time. It's very important to focus. Teacher breaks new grounds, share his experiences, inspire the student. The teacher now is not only to knowledge delivery. Some years ago, I made an online course named Python for Zombies. Zombies equal um, beginners. Now I recorded uh, 150 new videos. And in this picture, we see a vegan zombie. <laughs> and the caption is, can I just say ni in Portuguese? Python for Zombies is a free course, a Brazilian Python community initiative, not of my university, it is the first MOOC, Massive Open Online course, to teach programming in Brazil, in Portuguese. It is a Python Django website, it is very important because only 5% of Brazilian people are able to read in English. Some students prefer to choose a regular, regular website with more order in the content. Our videos are very short four minutes long. A lot of students use cell phones to see the videos, so it's important to use big fonts. Um, in stay at home, it, stay at home, home moment, uh, maybe there are one computer in the house and the parents need to use and brothers and sisters and the cell phone is the uh, preferred um, app to, to see my, my, my videos. I have a blue yet to record the audio. The most important thing in online classes is the audio. There are places to ask questions like many other MOOCs and a lot of exercise. So the students have a way to practice the program skills. And the, there are resol, uh, resolution, code resolution and the videos to explain these exercises. My way of teaching is using flipped classrooms and with static videos at the Python for Zombies website and with Microsoft Teams or Discord, I made my interactions with the students. Sometimes I need to use other ways like a phone call to a student without computer 
or even WhatsApp audios to answer some particular questions. I decide to use students' codes to teaching that motivates more to learn. This is a 12 years old girl code. I also teach kids in my city besides university lessons. And there is another 12 years old girl code, um, Caesar Cipher using Python 3 um, to translate to Chinese some messages. Hitchhiker's Galaxy's Guide is a very popular book among my students. For students, fun is the best way to learn something and pay attention. And 42 is always the, the answer, <laughs> even using Python libraries. What's the trick behind this? Python is a free software. Is funny, a funny way to teach what is free software changing the code of a random.py, for example. It's very fun. Teaching object oriented concepts like inheritance or overloading is also fun with 42 examples or even metaprogramming. Factorial or Fibonacci produces very mongoose numbers, not in my course, <laughs> because 42 is greater than Apocalypse Beast. The core definition of a language uh, is in his abstract syntax tree. I changed Hello world response for a function using uh, AST library. It, it, some, some glimpses of interesting things to students studying in the future. Conclusion. The students have a lot of distraction at home because everybody is in the same place. And, and there are a lot of noise of online, like a message from a crush in a dating app, for example. And at home, short videos works well. Um, record the synchronous interactions are fine also to late review. My exam is completely changed. Now are a new way to fix concepts, to learn more. In introduction to programming uh, discipline, 90% of my students concludes the course. The Python community in Brazil are also using my new videos. There are 7,000 inscriptions in YouTube channel and 2 million views at this moment. The website that have independent videos have 3,000 new inscriptions in the last two months. All this news makes me very happy, very happy. And let's finish. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very nice talk. So how long have you been, been teaching remotely now? Um, four months, four months. Four months? Yes. Continuously, did you, did you have any? I, I remember when it started here in Germany, that uh, the, the teachers were, you know, completely unprepared for these things and didn't really know <laughs> what to do. So they, they kind of, they, it took weeks for them to, to struggle and tend to, to come to some kind of way of, of doing um, online things. Initially, they just sent 
you know, PDFs by email, um, and then maybe did a few phone calls, and that was it. So, how how did that develop in Brazil? Uh, in, at my university, is uh, order um, from from uh, <laughs> from the, the direction, and someone decides that is better than nothing, and I have colleagues on. Um, the Lao teacher um, sent PDFs, but uh, computer science normal disciplines are okay in the online. So the, the, the students basically, they, they take the instructions and go away, do programming, maybe upload to GitHub, and then, and then you can you correct things. Is that how it works? Or? Yes. Yeah. All, okay. all my projects are, are um, uh, my students sending GitHub repos. Right. Okay. That's good. Very good. There's, I see one question here in the Q and A. Do you think this new mode of education is sustainable, and how do you think this would change the way that education would be delivered in the future? <laughs> it's a hard question. I, I prefer to teach face to face because we, as a teacher, see the catching there, the problems. Um, the interactions are uh, a worse, worse thing in teaching online. At this moment, it's not the best solution, but the, the only solution. It's the only because, one, right, yes. Uh, mm. The only solution, because we, we stay online maybe for one year. My, all, mm -hmm. all my classes mm -hmm. are in labs, closed rooms, is unsafe with the pandemic COVID-19. That's interesting. The, the schools in Germany are scheduled to open again after the summer vacation, which is, um, it's like mid-August or so. They, they actually want to restart the normal you know, kind of education. I have my doubts whether this is actually going to work, but we'll see. So it's a very yeah, safe. I mean, it's it's going to be interesting. I mean, they. I don't know. It's it's kind of strange. They put so much effort in the first few months to to basically keep the numbers down, and now they're starting to go crazy about you know going back to normal again. Right. So let's see. There are no more questions here on the Q and A. Let me check the um, the room chat. So nothing on the room chat. So I would I would suggest that maybe uh, additional questions then get asked in the Discord channel, the uh, yes. talk remote teaching one, um, and then we uh, do a, f a short pause now. Maybe play a few sponsor videos. And uh, of course, you need to get your applause. Just a second. <laughs> Thank you. God. Yeah, this is this is the part I think is uh, what's missing the most in these online conferences. <laughs> <laughs> it it feels very strange when you when you you know do you, do you talk to your webcam and you don't get any feedback and and so we <laughs> thought that maybe you know um, i will leave the this. meeting i will go to the score channel okay perfect thank, thank you very you. much again Fernando. bye bye <laughs>